How's it going everyone, it's Ben here, and today I'm actually going to be showing you guys my recording booth. Now, a lot of people ask questions like, how do I get VO jobs, or how do I get people to book me more? Your acting ability and the way you sell yourself is definitely the most important parts of getting more jobs, but that only gets you about maybe 80 to 90% of the way there, of course depending on the project that you're working on. The remaining percentage is being the quality of your recording. Whether you're sending auditions to a client or doing remote recording for a project, it is important to have a recording space that does not lower the quality of your recording. Uh, for example, uh, maybe uh, your room has too much echo, or your neighbor is uh, jackhammering his house. Uh, for some reason, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> How you treat your recording space is definitely up to you. You just gotta make sure that your recording is as raw as possible. You definitely have to invest a bit if you want a good recording space. However, most people, myself included, don't really have a lot of money. But that's why I'm making this video, to show you that you don't need to spend a lot of money for a good recording environment. And since I'm moving to LA pretty soon, I figured I'd show you guys my recording booth before I have to take it down. So with that being said, let me just switch lenses real quick. <sighs> there we go. Oh, we have much more space now. All right, let's go uh, take a look. All right, so here we go. This is my recording booth. Um, it doesn't really look like much, but it does a really good job at uh, dampening the echo and the sound whenever I record. So this is essentially just a cube that's uh, made from PVC pipe. I used a video by uh, this one YouTube channel called Mike and Jen, so you can check them out if you want just a more, you know, in more in-depth uh, tutorial on how to make this and everything like that. The stuff that I have around here, like the blankets and stuff like that, these are uh, producer quality sound absorption blankets um, that are held up by um, shower curtains, as you can see there. Um, these are by this one place called Vocal Booth To Go. They're a really good company that uh, does really good with like just um, sound absorptions and stuff like that. Like uh, they have pads as well. Um, they also even have like portable, like actual portable vocal booths that you can um, either rent out or buy. All right, and uh, everything is held together by uh, these clamps that I got from Walmart. Uh, <laughs> relatively simple clamps that just, you know, keeps this thing shut because uh, it doesn't really connect to anything. So you might be wondering what that light is. Is it, what do I have in there? Like some ancient art? Artifact or something like that. Uh, well, you know what? I will show you guys. Let's just uh, give it a look. Okay, here we go. This is what the inside of the uh, the Volga booth looks like. Uh, like I said, it isn't really that much, but um, you can definitely customize this to whatever you want it to be. Um, I've seen uh, pictures of people like actually putting LED, like RGB LED strips over the sides here, so that it just looks pretty pretty cool. The PVC pipes are from Home Depot, and uh, I actually heard you can get them to sort of uh, construct this for you. So that's something pretty cool. I used to have a lamp up here that I would turn on, so I'm not recording in the dark, but um, that kind of broke off. So lately I've just been using this light right here, it's really bright, uh, it lights up the entire vocal booth, or I also use my phone as well when I'm too lazy to turn this on. So this is my microphone, this is the pop filter, uh, the, my microphone that I use is the Audio-Technica AT2020. I've had it for about um, five years now and I love it, um, it's really good. This is the microphone that I use for everything, whether it be recording uh, vocals, any sort of sound that I want to put in a video, maybe like an instrument here and there. But yeah, it works really well. It isn't even that expensive either. So if you're uh, looking to get into voiceover, I would definitely recommend this mic. And this is the microphone stand. You definitely don't need anything fancy when it comes to a microphone stand. Just so long as it holds it up pretty good, then you should be just fine. That's the audio interface. It's the uh, Studio UX2 by Line 6. I used to have a Steinberg UR12, which I'm probably going to go back to once this uh, blows out on me. I pretty much gave it away as a gift to somebody, and they like it a lot as well. This is just the extra interface that I had and it works pretty well. So one kind of disadvantage that um, I have with recording in this booth is that um, my computer is all the way out there, but I can't really monitor what I record when I'm in here, so sometimes I'll be recording something like, I'll never give up! And then I come out later to check out my recording to find out that it didn't record it. I'll never give up! But that is why I have this written down on my interface so I know the proper levels to uh, control my microphone. As you can see, it's uh, the top one is all out, which means I can probably just scream at the top of my lungs and the recording will be just fine. There's the uh, just the regular yell, like when I'm, you know, yelling uh, someone to come over. And then just the normal talking volume, which is near the top of the uh, the gain measure here. I usually I keep it in between the, the yell and the normal part. I wrote on here with a sharpie. One of your jobs when you're using your own home studio is to make sure that the audio engineer or the audio mixer's job goes as smoothly as possible. Because if they're stuck fixing the mistakes in your audio file, you're kind of delaying the time for the project to be completed. And nobody likes a delayed project. The number one goal is to get this done as fast as possible and as best as possible. 
Alright, so with all that, the total amount I spent on the recording booth was roughly around... $200. Now before you say, $200? That's not cheap at all! And click away from this video, um, usually recording booths cost nearly three times that amount, and like I said, if you're gonna do VO professionally, you're gonna have to make some investments. Also, this is only one method I used. There are many different ways you can acoustically treat your recording space. Lots of people like to use their closets, it's uh, relatively small, um, I mean it's built in your room and everything like that, and your clothes act as sound dampeners. I also used to use my closet, which is very fitting because one of the times when I was using it, it was for a yaoi visual novel. But with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching, it really means a lot to me. If you liked the video, leave a like, and I'll see you next time.